Today on Listen Up, permitting prostitution. A court strikes down Canada's laws on prostitution. What's next? Welcome to Listen Up, I'm Lorna Duick. We're the show that looks at today's news from a Christian perspective, and today we're exploring the move to legalize prostitution. So we want to alert you that the content of today's program is not appropriate for children. When an Ontario Superior Court judge struck down Canada's laws surrounding prostitution, ruling them unconstitutional, she paved the way for any adult to participate in and profit from prostitution legally. The judge in the case made the point that she was ruling in the interests of women's safety. Now a provincial and federal government appeal has challenged that lower court decision. While Canada waits on that ruling, pressure to decriminalize sex for sale increases. So today we're exploring the impact of this trend and asking how, as a society, we can best keep the women and children most often victimized in prostitution safe. Later in the show, we'll hear from stories of a former prostitute and a former John, and how they got involved in buying and selling sex, and why they got out. But first, when the court challenge was launched in Ontario last year, we heard some of the voices for and against. You stay a prostitute because you want to, not because you have to. That opinion flies in the face of Statistics Canada findings. According to the numbers, most prostitutes begin their careers in their early to mid-teens and go on to lead lives of exploitation, violence, substance abuse and disease. The challengers say that changing Canada's laws surrounding the sale of sex will help keep those prostitutes safer. Well, over the last two decades, we've seen an increasing number of missing and murdered women, all coming from the street sex trade. And we started to look at how the law was operating, realized that the law prevented women from taking any legal options to protect their safety. And in light of the Robert Picton trial, we thought the time was ripe, as Canadians would understand, that the law, as it's currently constructed, even though it may want to achieve good results, is actually hurting people very badly. Uh, you know, the safety arguments often premised on the idea that it will move women indoors. But if you decriminalize prostitution both on the street and indoors, which is what the, the court cases are seeking to do, you're not going to change anything about the pattern of the demand or uh, about the places where the women go. They're going to stay exactly where they are. Like myself, I kept losing legitimate jobs after I was raided because my face would be in the paper the next day and the business didn't want to draw attention to itself. I could never sit at the front desk in this reception area ever again in any corporate office. So I am here, I have chosen this path and I have to stick to it. There's no turning back. Those who fought for this ruling say it's all about protecting the safety and security of those involved in prostitution. To explore that claim, I'm joined by Professor Benjamin Perrin from the Faculty of Law at the University of British Columbia. He's author of Invisible Chains, Canada's Underground World of Human Trafficking, and by Natasha Fall, a former prostitute. She works with Toronto's Sex Crimes Unit, helping child victims of prostitution. Natasha, let's start with you. What was your reaction when you heard the news? In all honesty, I, I cried. I cried like a baby. I, I, I just I thought of the many victims and the survivors and, and what I believe to be the majority of the women who feel otherwise, that this is not um, a, a liberating job choice for the majority of the women that are involved in the sex trade. And I just, I just felt so sad for their, I felt our, our experiences were discredited by a, a, a small few. So if legalizing the exploitation of prostitution is not the answer, what is the answer to keeping prostitutes safe? Uh, it's by sending the message that Canadians will not accept uh, uh, purchasing uh, sex, commodifying women and children in our country, holding the demand accountable and, and looking at more of the Swedish model and what they're doing and, and uh, keeping the criminal element uh, alive for the men and the demand for the supply and decriminalizing for the victims. Okay, well let's go now to Professor Perrin in Vancouver. Professor Terry Jean Bedford was the main applicant in this case. She's put on a brave face, a strong woman, but you've noted that in her court affidavit she states that she entered the sex trade at 16 at the hands of an abusive 37-year-old drug dealer. How typical is that entry experience among women who work as prostitutes? 
Well, I think it's very telling that for uh, days now the media has been uh, referring to Ms. Bedford as someone who's uh, choosing this as a profession. We've been told by uh, many people, well, what's wrong if two consenting adults like Ms. Bedford want to choose to engage in in prostitution and I investigated that claim because I wondered what her history was. I was curious as to how uh, she was brought into this. Everyone has a unique story and hers as you've said was one of, of a tragic tragic account. As a young child she was subjected to physical, psychological and sexual abuse eventually ends up becoming in a child protection at the age of 16 and it was someone over twice her age, this abusive drug dealer, 37 years old who was the individual responsible for her becoming involved in, uh, in the sex trade, uh, selling herself, her body, to pay for uh, substance abuse of both herself and this individual. As it turns out, the research really shows what many people would assume. I, I mean, no one's really making any sort of choice among realistic career options in terms of selling their body. They, precipitating events include things like homelessness, uh, substance abuse, physical and uh, sexual abuse. Uh, the list goes on and, and it's, it's unfortunate that some people don't realize um, that that is really for 85 to 95 percent of the people being sold, they, they want out but don't see a realistic way out. Professor, I want to go back to Natasha here and Natasha, is that your experience as a former prostitute yourself? Are what Terry Jean Bedford has brought to the ruling the idea that she started as a vulnerable teenager, why didn't that, uh, that pain restrict them from looking for more freedoms for prostitution? Most of us entered as children, the average age being 13 to 16 year old, that someone uh, gets lured into this, this, this dark underworld. And so when does it become a choice? When they turn of age? When it's all that you've ever known, it's what, you, it's, what, it's, it's what you've been raised by, you believe that it's your choice. You tell yourself it's a choice in order to survive what you're doing. I've actually read the, the affiance, um, the, the evidence that they put forward, and all of them entered as children. So again, when do we start referring to them as, as, as sex workers? workers and when do we we start viewing this as a choice when in fact they were children entering it's 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 not just about two adults con making a, a, a consenting and and uh, two adults consenting for you know a business exchange it's it's sexually exploited children and I think that we need to start looking at the um, changing society's perception on who these people are and recognizing that they are victims okay professor Perrin if this ruling stands where is it going to lead well, I think the really troubling part about this ruling of uh, Justice Himmel in uh, the province of Ontario is that if it is permitted to stand, it's uh, of course on appeal, but if it were to stand and become uh, the law of the land, and if the Supreme Court agrees with her, then we would be in a situation where it would be legal for anyone to stand literally in a street corner with a list of sex acts and lists of prices next to it, much like you'd see a fast food menu. Uh, that would be completely legal. So too would be uh, brothels. There would be no body house law. So too would be living off the avails of prostitution. And one of the worst parts of this judgment is a line which Judge Himmel uses to reject and ignore, in fact, all of the evidence related to human trafficking and sexual exploitation at the hands of traffickers. I want to close here with both of you telling us what should we do as Canadians here we are on the verge of seeing our prostitution laws struck down what message should we be sending what can actually be done to make something different happen instead of opening the door to the victimization of women and children Natasha let's start with you what can be done uh, well Right now, we need to refrain from feeding into the lies that um, the media is selling us. You know, sex sells, unfortunately. We're in a culture right now where pimping has been made cool, and now uh, if this was this judgment is to carry through in 30 days, not only has it been made cool, pimp my Facebook, pimp my, my ride, your shoes are pimping, now we've made pimping legal. And we need to change, um, we need to change people's perception of, of pimping and who the victims are. And we need to educate our brothers and our fathers and our uncles and the men around us and tell them that this is not um, this is not a choice for women that these are victims. Professor Perrin. Well if there's any uh, positive outcome from this uh, atrocious judicial decision it's that it finally makes the politicians in Ottawa have to listen for alternatives to the status quo. I, I don't advocate in favor of current uh, criminalization of people being sold for sex. Many of these people are victims of crime who need our help and that's why the approach that Sweden has adopted really is the way to go. So in the in the debate that happens now we need to place responsibility on the traffickers and the men who are paying to abuse women and children in Canada in the sex trade today and ensure that there's support and assistance for those who are being sold. Professor Benjamin Perrin in Vancouver, Natasha Fall in Toronto, thank you for being with Listen Up. Thank you. Thank you.
And when we return, the dangers that come with the sex trade after this. I think when Canadians see it as simply an exchange of money between two adults, that's one thing. But when I think Canadians understand that the impacts on their communities are much broader, a lot of them, I believe, would have a different opinion of prostitution.